Good luck. Apologize. I had messed up the original few seconds of this video here. It helps to capture the right window. Uh, but yeah, this is the Shogi Teaching Ladder. I think week 110 or something like that. Um, hosted by four Adun of the Shogi Harbor community. Um, and participated in on 81 Dojo. So we get participants, most of whom are in the Shogi Harbor Discord server. Some of whom are not. Um, and... Yeah, the idea is you play a higher rated opponent and a lower rated opponent and seek to learn something um, from post-game analysis with each opponent. That's the spirit of the thing. Right, here are our opponents playing aggressively as they usually do. That itself is not a surprise. Um... I'll take one second to defend my king and see if our opponent does the same. Or I expect they're probably going to move the rook to the third file. Interesting. I picked something else today. I wonder why. Every move. Oh, right. They want to play this um, opposing rook strategy. They've played it on many other occasions and so they seek to play it again i can't talk them out of it um so if i push and we exchange they're going to drop the pawn back here um yeah but this is a convincing attack unless i strike first somehow ah uh so now if i bring out my knight no that's not quite right um how do i combat this thing i should know by now i really should Okay, we're going to bring this silver up. So I'm quite hesitant about putting my king facing a rook. Um, but it's fine. We've done it before. There's not a tactical flaw in it. It feels alarming. Um... But no, this is actually a-okay. So if I bring the king over, they push, we exchange. Not sure why I keep accepting these conditions. If I bring my silver up, they push, I take, we move the silver up. That makes it easier for them to attack rather than harder. Hmm. Okay, so we're just going to castle as if this is perfectly normal. This is something I've not tried against this opponent before. Normally I try some strange castle shape and things proceed in a weird fashion um all right so now i've opened the line for my bishop before our opponent has done the same um so I could actually prevent this pawn from moving forward instantly. This is curious. I 
So if I push this, we exchange, they bring up the silver, and I've lost ground. Um, but I've unblocked my rook. Hmm. I think there's some merit to opening the line for my rook. So let's do that. This doesn't bear any immediate threat, but it does tend to provoke this sort of a response. Although I did expect them to move the silver up instead of dropping a pawn here, so I'm a bit surprised. Um, Wait, was there an opening trap here? If I drop a pawn and then I move my bishop, there's... I don't see a trap. If I move the bishop first, they push this. Still don't see a trap there. Um... Alright, we're just going to build this castle. The one and only. You know, we need an English name for this. Uh, I know a Japanese name for this is Bear in the Hole or Anaguma. Um, I think an English romanticization of this name might be like King in the Corner. So we build this. Oh, hang on. No, I've got this the head of my castle covered. They've built an extremely compact castle. So I can take my time building something really solid. I know this is where I tend to go off the deep end and launch an attack against uh, this. However, I've stopped this pawn from freely advancing, and it's a bit challenging for my opponent to exploit whatever it is I've done here. I guess they could put pressure on this pawn. So, I defend the head of my castle yet again. And we'll see whether or not this castle is effective. Alright, they do attack this after all. Um, hmm. Now that leaves this exposed. I guess they could push... I could take... they could move the bishop out. I think it's fine. I could move the rook over, they could advance their silver this way. All right, you got my curiosity, although curiosity killed the cat, so let's be careful about mixing our metaphors here. Um, so I expect they'll bring this silver toward my rook in order to protect the bishop. Actually, they don't need to protect it, do they? It's already defended by a knight. Um but I'm anticipating my rook having been attacked by a silver general. So 
I'm counterattacking first. Um, I guess basically we're trying to figure out who can come up with the fastest attack. Um, one problem is that my silver is hanging, as are basically all of my pieces. Uh, so I need to be a little bit cautious. All right, so this silver hits my rook. Um, I have some ideas. Okay, first of all, this is what I want to try. I expect they might move the silver back. I might repeat this once and then bring my rook here next. Um, I'm debating if there are other places that my rook should consider moving to. Oh, all right, they're not going to repeat. That's fair. Um, that has its own set of problems, however. Um, Oh, there are tactics here. Oh my goodness, there are tactics here. All right, let's see where this ends up. Normally I would consider my rook taking on 4-4, but here bishop takes 4-4, followed by this fork, followed by rook takes rook, gold takes, um, rook drop, rook drop, uh, rook takes, gold takes, rook drop, looks interesting. Okay, but alternatively, um, they might be winning a pawn, they might not. But regardless, I get this awesome wedge that's extremely uncomfortable for them. So I'm okay with, uh, I mean, that might lose pawns very quickly, but I'm okay with however that ends up resolving. It's 
go back here. So we're attacking the bishop again. If they move the silver up again, the silver and pawn would block the bishop. So I think that's okay for me. Um, I'm debating should I drop back the rook at some point. And let them take this. Okay. So we're not ending up in that variation after all. Um, hmm. So I think my rook is safe, and I think my pawn is safe. I've not blocked my bishop, and hopefully I can complete my castle without losing all of my pieces. Um, we'll see. Uh, also, I could threaten to push this twice, and I'm not sure what they do. Oh, they could drop a pawn here right now, in fact. Um, and this ends up losing both of my pawns. In exchange for not a whole lot. Um, That's pretty embarrassing. Okay. If I'd move my silver to 6-6 six, six instead, my rook gets trapped. Uh, actually, when they take this, 4-4 four, four is still loose. There might still be some tactical potential here, particularly if they go pawn hunting. Um, But my rook does not belong here. Yes, this pawn drop looks really effective. I don't know what I'm going to do if they do this. Well, I could use my silver to try to target this point. So if they take here, if I retreat. Yeah, I don't have any choice but to retreat here. Which is awful. But that's my own lack of foresight in action. So... Next... Um, Next, I think this is appropriate. The silver takes, I guess rook takes is forced. I keep walking into tactic after tactic after tactic here, and it's terrible. Um, but no, here I'm expecting silver takes pawn. Even though I'm also expecting that that's a mistake. And the reason I think it's a mistake is because it's difficult for this bishop and rook to hold uh, the center. So, yes, our opponent has two extra pawns, but I have a castle, and sure, they have a shape. It's not really clear, but I'm aiming to attack before they complete their castle. What's new, right? That's our MO. We do that all the time. 
but maybe this time we'll get an attack that actually succeeds. Um, who knows? I expect bishop 2-2, two, two, and this is actually... I don't see a way to make this attack succeed. Um, bishop 2-2 two, two dodges, and then if I take here, they could hit my rook. And my rook could step over, and it's kind of a mess. But that's the kind of mess we're aiming for, right? If I take here, I'm definitely pinned. Also, is there some position where I could sacrifice my bishop to take here? That would be cool. At least that'd look cool. Oh, if I take here, they drop a pawn. I have to go back and they keep chasing me over and over. Um, maybe I need to defend my bishop. If I move the bishop up to defend it, then they push this. If I take... I could use either silver to hit my rook. If I move my gold over to defend my bishop, that's taking away from my castle strength. Um... Oh, if I do nothing, they're going to push the center pawn. Well, no, they aren't. It's not so simple. All right, we're going to defend our king. Surely that can't be a mistake. So I moved the rook all the way over here for no reason. Oh. Okay, so they're going to pin my silver even without my having taken a pawn. Interesting. Um, Uh, actually somewhat greedy, I would think. All right, so I defend my bishop. I don't want to do that, but what can one do? So they've saved their pawn to some end. They want this bishop exchange. That's interesting. Do I want a pawn? I don't think I want a pawn. If I move my silver out, it's fine. Um... If I move the silver, they hit my rook, silver takes. They take my bishop and my gold. Uh, I get a rook. Um, and a pawn. 
and then I can drop the, and it's not worth it. Um, if I take here the same tactics result, and I lose more material still. Where? When do I get good news? Um. I think this is fine. All right, so forward we go into the infinite abyss of confusion. So if a bishop exchange occurs, I take back. I'm still attacking this rook here. I want to activate my rook somehow. I don't really care how. I'm considering this pawn advance, but that seems hasty. Um, but how can they hit my silver? Ah, okay, this is a different way they can proceed. That's quite reasonable on their part. Although, it's a bit dangerous. This is more than a bit dangerous for them, actually. So, sure. Of course I could do bishop takes. Um, bishop takes, I don't think, is the best move. All right, let's go this way. So I have a horse and a bishop and a silver and a lance. It's an interesting material imbalance. Um, if I do nothing, they take here. Okay, I take a silver general. I'm trying to figure out how to hunt down this rook before it breaks my castle in half. But I think that's maybe the wrong way of thinking about this. Um, in fact, yeah, if they push this and we exchange, I could drop a bishop and take the other lance. So I think it's fine. Um...
could also cons well no I have to take this there's not a lot to consider here yeah this looks interesting so after Rook takes it oh okay that's not Rook takes What's the purpose of this, though? They want to split my golds here. I guess they succeed. Impressive. How did they find that move? Oh, hang on. There's more to that that meets the eye at first. So we get to shut down this file. It costs us the silver to do this, but such is the cost of business. Meanwhile... I can bring back my horse if they take time to move their rook away. Um, or I could take the knight. If I take the knight, then I can take here next and drop a knight and try to mate. But it's probably not going to mate. Wow. Fireworks this game. So many fireworks. Alright, that, I'm pretty sure I'm just winning. So, um, yeah, I'm going to drop a bishop on this diagonal. They'll have to spend a tempo dealing with it. They've, they're exhausting their attacking forces. Um... Okay, but this, if I, as soon as I move the silver, they can take this gold, is their point. Um, so I think I have to give them some material back. So I'm threatening a rook drop right next to their king. They need to spend some time dealing with my threat. Meanwhile, I'm covering some squares, not everything, but some. So that should help my defense a little bit. Also, I'm attacking this lance, so this kind of forces their hand. They're going to take the silver first. I recapture. And then um, they have a choice, actually. Do they take the gold directly, or do they drop something in front of the lance and maybe my gold has a chance to dodge? Um, I don't know. Either way, my king frees up some space in front of the king to run. Um, as I'm also threatening to start attacking their king closer and closer. <sighs> Would have been great if my horse were on 4-4. Wouldn't that have been great? 
none of this would have happened there. We would have had a different set of problems somewhere, but not this set. Um, I think this is fine. We'll see. So if they drop a pawn, I might drop a silver here. But maybe I drop my rook first. And then take here. If I drop the rook first and then take the pawn next, that looks interesting. Um, if I drop a rook. Okay, you got my curiosity. This is extremely dangerous. And that's why I'm curious. So, let's see. How much trouble I get in for doing that. This is basically me calling their bluff. Um, which seems risky. Okay, I defend my king. This costs me my rook. It's okay. Sanjudio 
My king is more important than my rook. That's heavy. Whoa, really? Okay. That's risky. I see we're both playing with fire today. So they pin my silver, so my silver cannot recapture if they drop here. Um, I'm a bit anxious about that one. Maybe I needed to drop back here instead. I don't know. There are many threats I'm attempting to simultaneously defend against. Maybe I needed to drop my horse back to defend my king. Um, maybe it's fine. Ah, so they're threatening to take here and then drop a gold here. That's a good threat. Thirty 
Or at least it looks like a very good threat. Hmm. They might take the silver. I take back. They drop the silver. I drop my lance. The silver takes lance. Lance takes. Lance drop. King back. It's not good. It's not good. Oh. That's one move slower. Um, well, I'll be damned. What can I do with a single move here? Not much, but not nothing. Sanjubio. This walks straight into a mate, doesn't it? Dragon takes, king takes, gold drop, king up, gold takes, gold takes, silver drop. Oh, king up though. My king escapes this way. Regardless, giving the opponent the rook was extremely dangerous and should not be repeated. Um. Sanjubio I play quickly because I'm convinced that I don't have a chance here. Yeah, I gave them the bishop, which was actually exactly the piece they required. Um, so yeah, I am checkmated. Alright, thanks for the game. Alright. Um, so, that was sharp, wasn't it?
Um, yeah. So after each game in the teaching ladder, we take time to review the game, hopefully from the beginning. So I know I'm the one controlling the analysis, at least since I lost this game. Uh, so let's offer to start the game from the beginning and take a look at it together. Um, so here I blocked my bishop straight off the bat. Oh, cool. All right, so yeah, they this could make for a more beautiful live stream display if I'm able to work with a large board. I know it's more work for the opponent if they're participating in Twitch chat and delayed a bit. Um, and I'm not having to type out my comments and stuff, and they are. But um, the large board is kind of nice. So here we started this game as we started other games in similar fashion. Hey, welcome. Um, so yeah, I still haven't found an antidote to this um, opposing rook strategy. But so today I tried something different, and I'm not as familiar with it, and not exactly sure where things went off the rails. Um, okay, yeah, I guess this is one point of departure and that, like, I haven't castled, you haven't castled, but here I am attacking, and this quickly becomes a target for you to attack further. I'm not sure, like, I could have considered this pawn push, could have considered this. I've done this before, um, but yeah, I don't know how much the opening contributes to this result. I was glad to stop uh, this rook from advancing further, but uh, the tactics got quite complicated. Um, let see, I bury my king in the corner. And I think this is this looks reasonable. Here I'd intended that if you wanted to go back and forth and repeat a little bit, I was gonna bring the rook here eventually. Um although that looks really confusing. Yeah. Your book says the bishop exchange is bad for the third file when we play this. Yeah. Um I think here you've covered against a bishop drop pretty well. Whereas, like, here I haven't defended my stuff yet. So I was really nervous about the bishop exchange. Because, um, yeah, in general, I think you're right that the third file player here gets and has numerous challenges defending all of their other things. Um, and once they've done that, then a bishop drop or exchange is okay. But yeah, there's a lot of targets uh, that are available to you when I'm playing third file rooks. So uh, I don't know. In this particular opening, it wasn't completely clear. I was so elated to get this um, that I completely missed uh, this idea. I saw that if I moved this forward, my rook gets trapped. Um, so I stopped my analysis there. Um, so this is hanging, this pawn right here. So like, it's not clear how I can defend this, but what I did in the game to try to defend it didn't work out, or at least, I mean, it distracted your silver but this might have done a better job holding on to the pawn. This would have been confusing, for sure. Um, yeah, so you could offer your bishop for my rook, and then after that occurs, I could eventually drop the bishop here and get this, and it's a mess. I think it might favor you. I don't know how to evaluate it. Um, so yeah, that's a good point. I don't know what else I can try. I don't feel like giving up the pawn for nothing. I haven't completed my castle, so maybe I should just focus on that. And just forget these two pawns and forget my attack. 
and recognize that, you know, eventually I'll get to attack, just not now. But if not now, then when? I don't know. Um, I could bring out the knight to defend my pawn, but it has the same problem. So, yeah, letting the pawns go might have been my best course of action. But this, I guess this lost a move for me, but forced you to place your pawn, but the pawn placement was, it allowed me to attack later. Looks really double-edged. This whole game looked really double-edged. Okay, this engagement, the silver exchange offer was, I don't know what I was thinking. Um, I haven't completed my castle. It's super important that when I play this, I have to complete the castle. That's the whole point of playing it. And instead I played something else. Um, I mean, it caught my interest, and so I start making progress here. And then I defend my bishop, but... Um, yeah, this is... I just didn't know what to do. I could have moved this, but then this happens. And sure, I could take back, but this is... I don't know. I'm not sure I could hold this position. Um, let's see. I considered moving this up, however... Um, what was it? There's some reason I didn't want to do this. I guess it doesn't bear a threat, and um, eventually it gets surrounded there. No, I guess it does bear th one threat. I guess this is the threat. That threat's easily stopped. And so there's really no advantage to bringing this forward at this time. Um, then eventually this could happen, and then the pawn joins the board. So, yeah, this rook move I made earlier seems to have repeatedly costed me. And I was just too proud to admit it or something. I don't know. I defend the bishop. You hit this... I choose not to take the pawn. That might be a mistake. I'm questioning everything at this point, because the game outcome was poor. Um, and I don't have any idea what I did wrong. Other than, like, moving the rook off to the side has repeatedly gotten me in trouble. But I figured my rook is trapping your rook, so it's fair. Yeah, I don't know. This is an interesting sacrifice. I was getting really confident at this point. Um, so... There's a lot to read. So if I take here, take back, I take here. It's, I thought you'd be able to defend your king. Hmm. Not sure how this compares to what happened in the game. Yeah. So if this retreats back here... Um... I was thinking, if I drop a bishop, you drop a pawn. Um. <laughs> so. Oh wait, no, this is actually interesting. So I'm threatening to take this. Well, no, if the pawn drops... Maybe I can't take this. Maybe getting the king and the rook right next to each other for one turn doesn't mean a whole lot. 
Um, yeah. And then I'm threatening. I don't know what. I want to say threatening. Like, side so take here. Brick takes. Um, I want to say I'm threatening something like this. But I don't know if this works. It looks sharp. And if the Caden runs, then... Um, do I take this rook? Should I have not dropped the gold in the first place? Do I drop a silver here instead? Do I drop a gold here and then try to drop a silver here? No, that doesn't mate. Um, yeah, maybe I just take the rook. And then something. Maybe this. So, yeah, losing control of the second rank looks problematic. Let's see, we have a comment. Let me check out what it is. Oh, sorry. Leaving host's position. Let me give the hat over, because this whole game I've been confused. Yeah. I mean, there's a lot of confusing variations here. So possibly liquidating here, taking that. Defending my king might have been the way to go. I don't know. Or maybe the rook back to 2-2 two -two is just very risky, and maybe there's something else that's required here. Like Rick 2 3 looks not easy to counter. Um, so, yeah, we're looking at Rook 2 2, we're looking at that. Potentially, this is on the table. But the important thing is that I don't give up the uh, shelter in front of my king. And I guess once I gave that up, everything was lost. Um, so. Maybe that's the lesson here. Or maybe somehow I'm subtly brilliant and there was some crazy combination that I should have seen and completely whiffed on during the game. And had I but seen the perfect moves, maybe whatever I did was fine until the very end. I doubt it. But this, this looks interesting. There could potentially be something here. On the other hand, like trying to defend against my bishop, I don't really have a great place to drop a second bishop. So I don't know how my attack could proceed here. Yeah. Well... Okay, I've given you the hat if there's anything you want to show, because I know you were looking at some other variations. I've been confused the entire game. I don't know what to do other than submit this uh, to Shogi Harbor on Sunday and ask, um, help me figure out what happened. So, maybe that's the best course of action. Um, I know the point of the teaching letters that we ideally were supposed to review the game together and figure it out. Uh, but we tend to play really tactical, extremely sharp stuff, and this does not lend itself to being figured out. Oh, okay. 
Well, you've got the hat. Is there anything you want to show? Because I don't know that I have anything I want to show. But yeah, the, we tend to play really sharp stuff. Yes, I thought, yeah, you played this attack very well. I didn't see most of these moves coming. Maybe it was a horrible mistake for me to give the Lance. Yeah, and then another horrible mistake to give up the Rook. Maybe. I couldn't find a way to salvage it at this point. This is just too difficult to position. I mean, I consider, like, bishop takes pawn, but that doesn't seem to salvage this. Yeah. Yeah, that was a very good attack. I think once I'd given up the rook, all hope was lost. Right. Yeah, I saw that. Um, so I know during the game I reacted in great surprise to Silver take 6-2. But in retrospect, I mean, you won the game. So, um, yeah, you obviously played the right move. Um, I didn't think that the... I thought your king was in more danger than my king was in. I just fundamentally don't understand a lot of things. Um, or maybe this is just too complicated for me to figure out. I don't know. When I played uh, the gold 3-7, that was a painful move, but... I don't think gold 3-9 worked either. Yep. Dragon takes. Huh. Okay. Yeah, during the game I was trying to solve this. Oh! I missed that. Wait. That's interesting. Wait a sec. Do I have time for this then? Because the lance blocks the pawn. I mean, during the game I thought I was okay here. Um, not sure why, because it looks hard for me to defend. Um... Hmm. Um. Hmm. I guess I don't have a checkmate myself. Yeah. Yeah, so that actually, that would have worked. Wow. Well, actually, hmm. I wonder. After this, um... Well, no, actually, you'd still do this. I missed this here. Yeah, that would have been the key here. Oh, silver drop. Silver drop, gold takes, gold take. I don't know about that. I think there's some nuance to this. Um, like, what's the idea? You take here, I recapture. Um, I don't know. Regardless, yeah, this lance drop seems to work as well. Oh, this capture? I don't think... does this one work? 
I don't think this one works. I've been saying that about all these, and most of them I've been mistaken about. But I think I'm right about this one. And then we run. And we keep running. Let me check what the comments were here. Ah, Alexi's commenting over here. Um, but I'm wanting to show everybody the large boards. I'm unfortunately missing Alexi's comments. Um, but yeah, hopefully we can benefit from them somehow. Um... Yeah, these... Yeah, I saw this during the game as well. And then I can run and keep running. And continue to run. Yeah. So, yeah, I think uh, you played this attack very well, and I played a decent defense, but not a satisfactory one. Um, yeah, this is just a overwhelming, extremely powerful attack, and it required very precise defense, and I wasn't up to the occasion. But I invited this... Um, by allowing exchanges on 2-6, and so maybe I needed to just not allow six exchanges in the first place. Yeah. So, nicely done. Um, I don't know what else to say about the game. Again, I've been remarking that I've just been very confused about all of it, but... Um, yeah, my time management I need to manage better. But um, other than that, yeah, I don't know what else I can have to offer here, unfortunately. It was just an extremely sharp game, and while those normally go my way, this is not a castle I play all the time. So I'll have to research this opposing rook and come up with some sort of antidote to it. Because um, I don't want to play the same variation every time against this. I'm trying something different each time, and this particular thing I attempted, maybe it would have worked if I held the 2-6 point. I doubt it, but maybe. Um, but it feels like I've almost come up with something that's not completely hokey. Um, yeah, alright, thanks for the game.